Hey guys, Jason Shellcross of the Fantasy Football Sackos here. Uh, glad to be back. Um, Alex and I have a good episode lined up. We're going to be talking about our favorite running backs for this upcoming season. Stay with us. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go, Fantasy Football Sackos. Back in the saddle. Had a had a brief, uh, brief, I don't know, respite away from Intermission. fantasy. Intermission after quarterback rankings. Um, we're going to do something, I guess. We want to talk about why we had to take a week off, week and a half. Um, and we're it's going to be a, a section we're calling Life with the Sackos, or I don't know, maybe when when life happens. Um, Sacks, Sackos, Modern Life, in honor of Rocco. There you go. Um, so, um, so we, we, we haven't recorded an episode in about 10 days, and we try to, our goal has always been to put one out every week. Um, we had to take a break. Uh, I had a, uh, a death in my family. Um, uh, my dad actually passed away about a week and a half ago. Uh, completely unexpected. Talked to him that day. Thank God. Um, um, so, you know, I've, I've been dealing with that and um, decided not to record last week. Obviously, um, really just wasn't able to, wasn't ready to in a lot of ways um and and still dealing with a lot of stuff right now obviously i think understandably so but um uh it was it's funny actually one of the last things that i talked to my dad about um because we spoke on the phone the day he passed and one of the things that we actually talked about was the podcast and um, I mean, he doesn't understand fantasy football, but he loves talking to me about it because it's something that I enjoy. And, you know, he heard, I believe my brother told him that I was doing a podcast with Alex. And um, he would just ask me about it and, you know, said, I'm glad you're doing something that you enjoy and it's fun and not hurting anybody. And, you know, it's fun listening to you and so that that was nice that was unexpected um he's always been a huge supporter of mine um miss him terribly and just yeah so uh love you dad um i was gonna i was thinking about having a miller light or uh, maybe some brown juice, as he called it, some some bourbon um, on the show while I recorded tonight. But my dad, just knowing him, he'd be like, "No, you gotta, you gotta be professional. You gotta, you gotta be professional." And and so I didn't. And and that there that was part of it. And the other part was I didn't know if I'd be able to keep it together. Not that I, not that anybody should have to keep it together. I I don't know. It's just been a long long 10 days 11 days however many um but i think i'm ready to try to get my life back on track and i think that this is part of it and is also a needed escape right now so <clears throat> with that heaviness um potentially behind us let's uh let's talk a little bit about fantasy football or football in general before we uh get too deep into uh fantasy sports uh alex how is your last week week and a half been buddy i haven't haven't talked to you in a minute uh first off uh condolences uh obviously rough um can't yeah. imagine you know um sucks so yeah. 20, 2020 can continue to suck on one oh um, Postponed wedding, lose my pops, and now he won't be there for it. I mean, it's just 
the emotions of all of it are just so raw right now. And Father's Day being on Sunday, it's just like, ah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Much appreciated. So, uh, my side, uh, my wife's family uh, has been in town for literally the last week and a half since we last talked. And That's amazing. Sister, See, I didn't know any of this. Yeah, so my, my wife's uh, sister has moved in uh, to help uh, both with future child care and uh, just to be around us a little bit more. So um, if That's awesome. Is, look, is looking for uh, somebody to hire. Uh, she is looking, so get at me. Is she, um, uh, is she older, younger than Hannah? I'm going to guess younger sister? Uh, she's younger. Yeah, nice. She's 20, 26, I think. Nice. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're excited to have her here. Um, her parents were here uh, to help move, move her in from Jacksonville. Um, she set up in our basement. It's, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm really excited. I will say that the best thing that has happened to me over the last 10, 10 days to a couple weeks was we purchased an air fryer. Oh, um, okay. And, uh, and I, I cannot <laughs> recommend it highly enough. I, I can make the world's best tater tots. Um, you didn't know what you were so, missing out on? No, literally. I like, it is so good. I I can't even begin to explain. Like instead of putting tater tots in the oven, you can put tater tots in the air fryer, and they're done like 14 minutes later. Is like it, perfectly perfectly crisped up? Is there like is there a ton of leftover oil and stuff? Like does it make a big mess? I don't know how this no, works. No, no, there, there's there's no oil. It's air. How does it's it like fry? A, it tastes like it's fried, but it's with it's like a con, it's like a small convection oven. What? Okay, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll send you a link to the one we have. It was like a hundred bucks. It's so good. Deal. Like I I made like a yeah. I basically I've just been taking everything and just shoving it in the air fryer at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so like even today I'm I'm taking like two two pieces of bread, slamming some turkey and some mozzarella cheese on it, and literally just sticking toothpicks in the side in both sides of it to keep the the like bread the, the bread from like flying around. <laughs> and I just I just shoved it in the air fryer. You got to experiment with like fruits and veggies. Like, can you fry something like it's not oil? What can't you fry? Yeah, no. So we like we threw carrots in there. Um, what? And they, they were great. Yeah, it's like a roast, like roasted a carrot. I, like, do you roast vegetables in the oven over? Yeah, all, all the time. Yeah, so you can you can just do that in the air fryer. So you can do like potatoes, carrots, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, <laughs> cauliflower. You can throw anything in there. The closest thing I have to this is we got a we got a uh, pressure cooker, the Instapot. Instapot, yeah, this is way better. Okay, okay, all right, I hear in, you. In my mind, but that's because I like fried food. So I also enjoy fried food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So well, so that's great. And then I will just a quick game of Throne updates. Uh, we're through season are, one, and you're watching. You're two. actually watching. Yeah, so we're we're in this we're uh, second or third episode of season three. Okay, um, so what do you think? Uh, it's okay. It's, it's it can just be okay? slow at times. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So when I watched one episode of Game of Thrones, which I referenced a couple episodes ago about watching the Battle of Winterfell, so I kind of already know who's like living and who dies and no, what happens. You che cheated. Yeah. So <laughs> there's some people that I'm fairly confident are not going to be around much longer. And so when there is uh, when there's dialogue, uh, extended dialogue, I'll like pick up the phone and check Twitter or something. Cause yeah. I mean, I mean, they're, they're going to die. So that happens. Yeah. But otherwise I'm, I'm thoroughly entertained. Well, that's good. May yeah. you enjoy game of Thrones. I feel like it goes away from like the first couple seasons, especially like, there was a lot of uh, I'll say I'll say there was a lot of intercourse and there is a lot of sex. Yeah, there was a lot in the first couple seasons and it was uh, I think just a lot more gory. It was much more HBO the first season or two. And then I feel like at some point in season like three or four, it really starts to go away from that and more towards just the story itself. So don't get me wrong. There is still some of it in there. It's just a lot less prevalent for time. 
Um, yeah, big, big, big fan of uh, of some of the characters uh, for different reasons, but I, I love that the Lannisters always pay their debts. That's yes. just a, a, it's just fantastic. Oh, T- Tyrion, I think was always my favorite. The quick wit and banter was just always wonderful. Yeah, especially yeah, at his he, own he's, expense. Yeah, he's skyrocketed. Uh, yeah. the, even though he's you know not very tall. Peter Dinklage is great. Um, yep. All right, so now that we've uh, spent several minutes talking about not football, let's talk about football. Uh, just came out in the news today. Alex, you even told me that some NFL players are now being uh, diagnosed uh, with coronavirus, including somebody we're going to talk about today, that person being Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so... Theoretically, it makes sense to almost bump him up your rankings because if he has the antibodies and can't get the coronavirus during the football season, he might be one of the few people that won't get it and have to sit out a couple weeks. I'm just saying theoretically. That that's certainly a a take, I I guess. <laughs> I don't I, I don't know how I I'm feel not, about I'm it. Prou- I'm not proud of it. I'm just saying. I I I mean, this is this season of football is going to be the craziest season of football that there ever was. Like, should you have should managers give an extra IR slot? Should there should there be maybe two extra IR slots? Maybe like, you know what I mean? Because people are to think that there won't be cases is just I don't even. That's not, that's just not realistic. No, I agree. Especially when you're, you know, running around with 50 other dudes from the other team and your team and everybody and who knows who's come in contact with who and who's asymptomatic with this. And uh, yeah, so people are going to get sick. Like, what are they going to do? I have no idea. And does one lawsuit like bring it all down you know what i mean yeah i mean that's that's why i'm wearing all my cub stuff today upon hearing that the uh mlb is not uh well they don't know if they're going to have a season which is really just a negotiating tactic to try to shorten it down to 50 games so the owners still get all their money and the players don't get as much money but yeah different sport so but yeah the so the so I, when i started doing my research for this um I, 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 what am I looking at? I, yeah. There are, there are so many people that I don't want to draft in the first round. Yeah. And based on what they did last year and what you project out for this year, it's like, I don't want to, like, I cannot justify taking somebody like seventh or eighth overall that I don't even want so it's maybe it's going to be it maybe it's going to be really rough. It, granted, it is only June. There's a lot more to come. But, it you know, we talked about do you take Lamar Jackson early? We, we talk about you can't miss in the first, second, third rounds. That's the easiest way to win. Generally, is if you don't miss in those first couple rounds. But there are so many people on here that that could miss. And, and I. So just for me to get into it real quick. If you had to guess, or I guess I can tell you, if you were to look at 20, I like this. We're starting off with a quiz question. Yeah, sorry. So if if you were to start and and look at the top running backs in 2018, how many of the top 10 running backs in 2018 finished in the top 10 in 2019? Dude, would would you like me to read off the uh, top ten? Can I see if I can? Years, can I see if I can guess ago? them? Sure. Oh yeah, actually, there you go. Yeah, read oh. read the top ten. Read read the top ten from two years ago. Go ahead. Top ten from two years ago. Number one, Todd Gurley. Did not Number repeat two, last year. He did not. He went from one to fourteen. Yeah. Well, that was. I think that was foreshadowed, and even before people drafted him, they knew that. Yeah, but 14 is fine. And the, yeah. the, I think that's about where he went overall, actually, from a running back position. So, you know, he yeah. was kind of drafted where, where he ended up. Saquon Barkley went from 2 to 10. 
He was generally the number oh, one. Oh, I was going to say, year. I was going to say, Saquon repeated. I was going to say that he did yeah. repeat. So, okay. So uh, I'll, I'll pause. And, and yeah. I'll and then I'll let you know if I think they repeated. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey obviously, obviously. Went, from, went from three to one. Elvin Kamara was number four two years ago. Uh, Super Camario. Um, I think he probably repeated, but if uh, 10 was already taken, did he get ninth? He did not. He was 12. Okay. Okay. But that's still an RB1 in a 12 person league. Yeah. No, that's still an but RB1. He, yeah. He, he was probably taken third or fourth overall last year. Yeah. So well, yeah. He didn't live up to the draft. Right. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott was five. In 2018, he was five? Yep. Uh, he had the holdout. He repeated. Yeah, he was four last year. James Conner was six. Obviously did not. Yep, dropped to 34. Melvin Gordon was seven. And the holdout, out. man. Yeah, the holdout yep. killed that. Yep, finished 23. James White was number eight two years ago. Didn't. Nope, finished 22. Joe Mixon was number nine. And he went to number 13. And David Johnson went from 10 to 38. David Johnson, so, I think, is the biggest disappointment out of that entire group. Everybody else, yep. I feel like there's sort of an explanation. But David yeah, Johnson's fall off is just completely unforeseen last year. So if, if you're looking at it from a, if you're going to take a running back early of the breakdown from last year, or from two years ago, I should say, three stay in the top 10, three were top 20, two were top 30 and additional two were top 40. Yikes. So, so there wasn't like that big of a breakdown, um, just to compare it to wide receivers since we're here and you can kind of use it as a point of reference, three stayed in the top 10. So same amount as running backs, two were top 20 instead of three for running backs, two were top 30 for wide receivers, two were top 30 for running backs. And uh, three were no longer ranked for wide receivers. Um, those that completely fell off were Antonio Brown, oh. Juju Smith-Schuster, and yeah. Adam Thielen uh, were top ten wideouts the year before that did nothing. So, yeah. If so, if you're looking at it between the two, the running backs are probably less bust proof. Technically, yeah. like they're they're going to at least get you something in return. Uh, versus wide receivers seem to be more boomer bust potentially, right? So I have more for you. Oh, and this is this is this is very statty. I so love I, being I, I ed educated. Teach me. I, I yeah, I apologize off the top. The top ten from last year. What? So of of the top ten, three were in the top ten the prior year. Okay, we we already discussed that it was Zeke. Uh, McCaffrey and who was it? And um, Saquon were, were the top three that stayed there. Two more running backs that became in the top 10 were top 20 the year before. Four were 21 through 30, and one was 40 plus the year really? before. So, where, where, when we're talking about running backs, there is a lot of potential for these people to climb up and to climb down. And the biggest indicator in my mind is touchdowns because it just makes sense. They're worth more points. The more touchdowns you score, the more points you can get. So last couple stats, I'm coming out strong on your, I like it in 28 and I have this for 2018 and 2019 in 2018. If you scored 10 or more touchdowns in 2018, all of those backs were in the top 10, except for one. And it was Derrick Henry. And he was like 14. Really? Well, it's, he yeah. doesn't catch any balls. Correct. In 2018, if you scored seven or more touchdowns, 18 players did it. All were in the top 25, except for Alex Collins, who got hurt for Baltimore. Okay. In 2019, if you scored 10 or more touchdowns, there was 10 players. Or no, sorry, there were not 10 players. There were, and I'll run it. But all of them were top 10 running backs, except for Todd Gurley. So if you had 10 or more touchdowns, there were seven of them. They were all top 10 running backs, except for Todd Gurley. If you had seven or more touchdowns, 
There were 16 players that did it. All of them were top 25, except for Sony Michelle. Who was bad at football. Who was just bad. Yeah, he was 29. So if you can find the guys that scored the touchdowns, those are going to be the top backs. Okay. I'm going to use this against you later because I don't like some of your rankings. But that's fine. I want guys that I think are the least least likely to be in a timeshare who simultaneously I think are on offenses that will potentially end up in the red zone and afford them the opportunity to score these ever so valuable touchdowns. And some of your players I question. Um and we'll get into that. Uh, we're uh, Let's, I mean, let's I'm be honest, excited. people. We, and we, do you want to get into these rankings and just dive in? Yeah, fire away. All right, so let's, let's preface this with the fact that uh, Alex and I are very similar in our top 12, and I think that's what we're going to talk about tonight is our top 12 running backs. Where we really differ, I think, and is, is going to be fun for the next episode, is running backs 13 through 24. But I think we, 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 I I have a couple that are, are a lot higher than you though. Yes. Yes. There are, there's a lot, there's a lot more variance in the last six of the top 12 than the first six. Our first. So uh, another, another uh, preface is we are assuming health for players like Ezekiel Elliott. And we are assuming signed contracts for players like Dalvin cook, who are currently threatening a holdout that may last into the season. Obviously, this being the middle of June, I mean, if he's talking about holding out in August, September, I'm not going to be like one of those guys that's like, well, he's going to show up on practice day one and he's going to be there. Like everybody said about Le'Veon and then Le'Veon didn't play for a year. Like, And and everybody also said it about Zeke and then he was there the first week of the season. Zeke got a contract though. Yeah, but it wasn't until like after drafts were done. It was like three days before the season started. Yeah, last year. yeah, 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 absolutely. But like he said, I'm holding out till I get a contract. He held out. He got a contract, and then he showed up. Melvin said, "I'm holding out till I get a contract." Didn't get paid. Missed half the season. Had a horrible whatever you want to call last year, and now isn't with the team anymore. So, I mean, I always err on the side of caution and take them. At their uh, at their word, if they say they're going to hold out, then if Dalvin's still holding out in September, I will not draft him, and I would love to replace his number four ranking with a gentleman by the name of Alexander Madison. But his name is Alexander Madison. There we go. I like. We got some singing. We're ready for this. All right. First four, I think, are the consensus top four in everybody's rankings. Um, we have. Christian McCaffrey, Alex and I both do at number one, consensus number one, average a shave under 26 points per game last year. What, six, five, six points more than the number two running back? Um, yeah, absolute seven. Insane seven points more than the next highest scoring running back on a per game uh, scoring basis. Now, is CMC <laughs> overvalued? Does no. does Matt Rule scare you? I don't care. What He's if so I good. told you that in Matt Rule's last year at Baylor, he had three different running backs all have more than 100 carries? Yeah, none of them were Christian McCaffrey. Okay, that's I mean and that's it's college. That's fair. It <laughs> so we think he's still going to be the 90 seven percent usage guy that never comes off the field and he's still gonna get and the offense won't change and he's still gonna have a hundred catches and however many insane targets i mean he so he had 19 total touchdowns last year you can literally take all of those touchdowns away and i think he's still the number one back but the change in offense from and last year that's insane the change in head coach, offensive scheme, and quarterback don't scare you or make you nervous at all. If they hired a new head coach and he can't figure out how to get the ball into Christian McCaffrey's hands and he is an offensive mastermind, then 
I don't know what to tell you. Okay. I guess my point being is that if all they had to do was put the ball in Christian McCaffrey's hands, then maybe they would have won more football games. And maybe that isn't how they win football games. Cause they didn't win a lot the last few couple of years. Yeah. But I mean, who was throwing the ball? Hey, Kyle Allen demands your respect. <laughs> I mean, Kyle Allen had 16 interceptions last year. Well, Jameis has had 30, and uh, he's a professional quarterback as well. So, and he threw almost twice as many. Whatever. Christian McCaffrey is clearly the number one. <laughs> if you if you if you have the number one pick and you don't take him, um, you're really rolling the dice. And last year, you know, I had the number one pick in two different leagues. I took Saquon. I immediately regretted that my decision. Did uh, you really? The entire year. Yeah. Huh. I hated it. I hated it the whole year. Because, not, not because Saquon was terrible, it's because he got hurt, uh, but just because CMC Christian McCaffrey was so good. so good. He's just so good. He was. So, it, it's, it's the number one pick. We're, we don't really need to bug you with statistics because... I mean, it was it was absurd. He had 141 targets. He had 116 catches. That's insanity. Yeah, I mean, he had a thousand yards receiving, 19 total touchdowns. It, I mean, he's he's the number one guy, and it's there's not really a close second. And then uh, I have Saquon at number two, as do you. Uh, Average a shave under 17 points per game uh, last year. However, he did get hurt, miss time, and then come back and play hurt, uh, obviously hurting his production. His quarterback, Daniel Jones, missed time. New offensive coordinator, Daniel Jones, hopefully healthy. The rest of the cast and crew, hopefully healthy as well this year. Um, I think Saquon is going to have an up year this year if everything goes their way. Theoretically, yes. It, it's just hard to, it's hard to tell with some of these guys, right? Because inherently you want running backs that are on winning teams. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, we talked about, they need to be able to score points, which means they need to be able to get in the red zone to score those. touchdowns. Yeah. So if, if they don't like, if they're not scoring touchdowns, because again, and I'll get into some, a little bit more later with, you know, getting some goal on carries, but it's like, if they're not going to score touchdowns, then it's really, really difficult for running backs to be top 10 if you don't have, you know, eight plus touchdowns. Now, I know that's only one every two games, uh, but still, that's. He should have that easily. And I, I would yeah. say that, you know, because of because of Jason Garrett becoming the offensive coordinator, Zeke's always been a monster, you know, always consistently top five since he came in the league. So if you can just take Zeke's production and drop it into Saquon, uh, Saquon's a better receiver. Daniel Jones, year two in an offense, and he'll learn how to get the ball over to Saquon. And plus, you do have Evan Ingram coming back, who um, is good when he's healthy. Uh, Tate's there when he's healthy. Shepard is there when they're... So, you know, that offense should look a little bit different. And to your point, you love Danny Jones. So if if he is... If, if he's able to get Saquon the ball, Saquon, I think, is the, I mean, I know Christian McCaffrey is really fast, but, you know, those runs a couple of years ago before Saquon hurt his ankle, like, he would he would hit a hole and he would be gone and you can't catch him. Yeah. Uh, so, because of that, that game-breaking ability, uh, it, that's, that's why he's got to be two. He was basically number one or two last year. We have him in the same spot and he's, he's up there. You know, it's, it's hard, you, you know, we, we have him at two, but it, you can take Zeke there and that's fine. If, if you, if you want more of the reliable Dalvin cook, eh, I, you I know, think be, between, if, be, between Zeke and Saquon, there, there's very little difference. So if we're talking about their ability to score touchdowns or opportunity to score touchdowns, if I had to rank these four, because I think, I think CMC, I think McCaffrey is probably his own little baby tier at one just because of his insane yeah. usage last year. Yep. But then I think the next three guys are all on their own tier. Maybe Kamara, if uh, you could maybe put him in there. The, the problem with Kamara, though, is 
I mean, because they have Latavius Murray and him vulturing some of those touchdowns. I mean, Latavius yeah. had five he had, had five touchdowns last year. And if if they're gonna be messing around with Taysom Hill at the goal line and True. try like like they, they do a lot of cute stuff down there to get Michael Thomas the ball on on screens and True. and things like that too. So that's that, that's why you have to have yeah. it a little bit lower. But if that touchdown so, I, so maybe then comes the, back then Yeah, it's 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 McCaffrey and then Barkley, Elliott, Cook. And that's the order that we have them in. But if I had to rank them by, you know, offense potency or ability to score, I would probably do Zeke at one. I think I would probably do Dalvin at two. Mm, Christian McCaffrey at three and Barkley at four. Or maybe Barkley probably. over McCaffrey. Yeah, just from a, a potential scoring offense. Yeah, but offense, the Giants, the Giants defense isn't good, so they're gonna have to score points. So right, which means that, that they're gonna that, have to throw, and maybe that means worse game scripts for Barkley. I mean, it, there's so many things to think about. Yeah, but I, I think any four of those would make a great RB one, assuming that they're all healthy and have contracts. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. The, the question ultimately comes in: is where do you want to take Michael Thomas? Um, would you take before before some of these running backs? I'm just saying that it's possible. All right, no, no, no. Could. You need to like buzz, slap, yell, scream when you would take. I'm assuming Michael Thomas is your wide receiver one. When you would take a wide receiver over any of these guys, because for me, I, well, I'm, Mike, I'm taking a running back over all of them. Or all, okay, uh, so that's fine, any of these guys but, over Michael Thomas. I mean, but I would also say Michael Thomas had more points than all of them last year. More okay, yeah. So, so I mean, M- Michael Thomas had three hundred points. Um, Christian had four thirteen, and then all the other ones uh, were under. So Zeke had two eighty five. So I mean, on a per week basis, that's a point. But you know, I, you can do whatever you want. It's it's whatever you want to plan for. Um, so would you take I, Dalvin just, Cook or would you take Michael Thomas? I would take Michael Thomas right now because of the contract situation. I would take Michael Thomas over Dalvin Cook. Be, before we started this, and I sent you my rankings. I didn't even have Dalvin Cook ranked because I didn't I didn't want to deal with it. Yeah. So specifically, I would definitely take Michael Thomas over Dalvin Cook if we were drafting tomorrow. No yeah. doubt. All right. So consensus one through four are uh, McCaffrey. Free Barkley, Elliot, Cook. Uh, is there anything that you want to say about Zeke? Are you concerned about the new coaching staff? No. Uh, the the Cowboys have so many weapons that that that's my concern. That's the, yeah, that's that's the only concern. And you know, if they're smart about it, if they are blowing people out, and Dak is throwing for you know 330, 350 yards a game. And you have CD Lamb and you have Cooper and you have um Gallup. You know, it's just if are are they gonna get up 14 and just turn around and keep giving the ball to Zeke? They might. Now, if you're up 14, why would you not put the backup running back in and keep the miles off of Zeke and keep him ready for the playoffs? I can Especially see if he ways. has corona. Well, yeah, I'm not worried about that. I mean, he has it now. He'll be fine the rest of the season. So yeah, we're, I, hoping. I, we're hoping. So yeah, I mean, again, he he's consistently top five every year. He went from five to four. If if you can take that consistency and you know you're going to have a top ten back at worst, um, I think it's pretty good to to go ahead and take him the top four. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I agree. McCarthy uh, leading the league in terms of percent uh, plays being pass plays a couple years ago with the Packers doesn't really scare me. He had Aaron Rodgers and I don't know, a, a really young, maybe even rookie Aaron Jones with him. And so not, not, not really the, the type of backfield that you lean on at that time. So I, I understand. Yep. Yep. Um, and Dalvin cook for me at four. I mean, if cook isn't there, it's going to be interesting in a few months if Cook isn't there still 
and we're talking about where you draft Alexander Madison at. I mean, he has to go as an RB1. Because he would, he's going to be an R, Alexander Madison would be an RB1 for as long as Alexander Madison was the starter for the Vikings. So. But there's a million things he hasn't done. Just, but just you wait. Yeah, we'll see. That there will be like six people that get that reference. I apologize. I, I was not one of those six. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, you should watch <laughs> Hamilton, by the way. It's coming out on Netflix in a couple weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Th- you mean like the uh, play? Uh, it's a musical, actually. Uh, excuse me. Uh, musical. Yes. Don't don't mean to offend. Yes, I have not seen the musical, but yes, I did hear amazing things about it, and I've seen clips and Lin Manuel Miranda. Did yeah. So right? once yeah, once you watch that, you'll um, you know similar to Fat Eddie Lacey, you'll have to sing uh, Alexander Madison. There you go. So you could just it, keep singing it for us. I will every time I say it. Actually. <laughs> all right. Uh, consensus. I'm, I'm I'm sure you're all Tana thrilled. There we go. That's that's what I'm looking for. That's what the people want. Consensus number five, Alvin Kamara. I have him at five. You have him ranked at seven below the likes of Derrick Henry and Leonard Fournette. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Alvin Kamara averaged 14.9 points per game last season obviously not where the output didn't match the draft position last year um on a points per game basis he finished as running back at nine he did not finish there in total points as stated earlier um however i don't fault people for missing weeks i think it sort of goes with the territory with fantasy sports um I think Drew Brees also really affected his scoring output. He just loves Michael Thomas, man. Those little five yard dink and dunks to Michael Thomas were incredible last year. Um, but he, his ceiling, I think is maybe almost just as high, just like this much, maybe this much lower than the people above him. If were it not for Lat Murray lurking, in the backfield um yeah so that's that's actually one of my biggest things though because so last year he averaged 12 carries a week and seven targets per game wow it's 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 really difficult to be a top running back with unless you're like and you you know going back a couple years ago i mean the dude was electric but it's like if you're not getting like a big workload, it's hard to seven. It's hard to, seven targets is a ton. No, I, 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 I'm not disagreeing with the targets. I'm just saying that the carries aren't there, and those yeah. goal line touches are going to Latavius Murray. Yeah. So, I mean, I have him at seven. You have him at five. I like my ranking better because that's my ranking. But huh. I, the 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 potential just isn't there unless he's just going off. But he was hurt last year, so yeah, you know that that explosiveness was reduced a little bit. He said he's ready to go for this year. So if if he doesn't get banged up, if Drew Brees is healthy the whole year, who's ancient uh, and and not a guarantee, it's it's hard to uh, it's just hard to know if what he's going to give you on a weekly basis. And I feel like he's more of a boomer bus guy, similar to like Namari Cooper, who will give you those huge weeks and then might not have a huge week um, for you. Just that's, that's how it comes off. He, last year he had weeks of 6.5, 4.3. Um, everything else was over 10. Uh, so the, those weeks were against uh, the Rams and 49ers. So overall, he's going to give you 10 points a week. So he is consistent. Um, so he, I, he probably, he probably finishes as a top 10 back this year. Uh, we have him ranked as such, but it's it's hard to know uh, what his explosiveness is. But to your point, he missed two weeks, and uh, you know he finished twelve last year, so probably top ten back, assuming health. I agree with all of those things, and Alvin Kamara 
I think has just skill. I mean, he's so fun to watch. He's so freaking elusive. Um, let's move on to running back six consensus. Derek Henry. I feel dirty ranking him this high. And before everybody points to him leading the league in rushing yards last year, I get it. I understand it. But these are half point PPR rankings. And Alex, the statistician, I'm going to put you on the spot. How many catches did Derrick Henry have last year? Uh, can I look just because I have it handy? Sure. He had, okay. he, he, yeah, he, he had 18 it, catches. I was say a, whopping, a whopping 18. Yeah. One a week. Like, how. In a half PPR ranking, how do you rank a back who catches one ball a week in the top six? And I, the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is pure yardage, pure rushing yardage and touchdowns. Yep. And he produced in the year before that, uh, in 2018, like the last four games of 2018, he, they, the Titans made the shift and they stuck with that shift to Derrick Henry in 2019, I don't think that that offense changes. It got better with Tannehill. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. The you, Mariota? You his, no, you said his name wrong. Tana Thrill. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Derrick Henry is six consensus. I had, I had to put the man at eight in my rankings just because like catch a ball have more to catch two balls three balls a game i don't know i mean if the rushing yards aren't if they get behind and they can't run what happens to him they didn't get behind a lot they were in basically every game and they were a playoff team and they won a lot of games and so they didn't have to go away from derrick henry but like oh one ball a game how do i rank you that high i don't know yeah so very touchdown dependent uh he had 42 carries inside the opponent's 20 yard line and scored on 13 of them. Oh uh, yeah, those, baby. For those of you keeping track, that's a 25% rate. Mm. When he gets the ball inside this one, he scores a touchdown. Mm. That's, that's very hot. It's very high. That's manly. So if he were to keep that up, um, then yes. But to your point, you know, I, I have him at five because of the touchdowns. Um, and I actually had him at four, but you made me put Dalvin Cook in front of him. So, I, I mean, the dude is just a beast. Uh, you know, if, if assuming he stays healthy, he's going to run over that AFC South, the the Colts, the Jags, and the Texans. Uh, yeah. They're, you know, he's he's just a beast. And that, that entire team just has the mentality of, I'm going to run you over. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it to stop. To and stop they do him. it well. Yep. Uh, for comparison's sake, uh, to Alvin Kamara, um, even so, Derrick Henry only missed one week. Uh, it was uh, week 16 against New Orleans, so it was a killer uh, for the fantasy playoffs because he got dinged up. He had three weeks under 10 points um, last year. He was over 30 in two of them. Uh, the last week of the season, he had 39. Uh, Kansas City at 32, uh, and then week one, um, he had 28. So, dude dude was more consistent um, from a, well, from a higher uh, consistency ranking. He, he consistently had more points than Kamara did last year. Um, but, you know, in those weeks that they do get behind, he's not catching balls. So... If they're going to turn around and give him the ball 15 times and he's only getting three yards of carry and doesn't score a touchdown, uh, you know, you're going to end up with a week where you only get six points. And yep. that that's that can be rough to get out of your RB1, especially yep. if you're going to especially if you're taking him like pick six, pick seven, pick eight. Um, you know, is is that something you want to be drafting there when, you know, half a point PPR, full point PPR, or are you better off? taking the wide receiver or other running backs to get more, get more receptions. Yep. Absolutely. Average 19 points per game tied for running back to on a points per game average last season, Derek Henry, they have to keep winning ball games in order for him to keep up that output. Uh, and they're down 20. If they're down double digit points, like he's not on the field. I, I don't know. 
but they want they were they were in every game and he scored a lot of points and he ran for what 1500 yards and he had a great season so yeah again it's a it's a pick that you're looking at and you're staring at it's at you know five six seven eight and you're like do i really want to deal with this and not and not get those catches yeah but the upside the upside's clearly there but are you better off taking julio or he's my running back eight i don't think yep i don't Maybe eight running backs go in the first round. So, to me, I I would ha- I would still be drafting him at the end of one. I have Kenyon Drake and Josh Jacobs in front of him. Um, Derrick and- Henry was running back three last year. Yes, yes, he was. So he caught so, eighteen you know, passes. No, I I get it, but he was still running back three. He did it last year. He did. That he did. But you don't want to pay for, for past performance. Right. Um, let's move on from consensus number six, Derek Henry, to consensus seven, Kenyon Drake. I have Kenyon Drake at six, as I just mentioned, and you have Mr. Drake at number eight. What can you tell me about Kenyon Drake? I don't really want to draft him that early <laughs> oh no see I like him more I like I, him more than I Derek know. Henry I love him I mean, man he won so many people fantasy titles Dude, last year his last three games yeah, 38 points 30 points 14 he won titles and he was on people's bench before that like and then you you add you had DeAndre Hopkins to it? Like, oh, how do you not? I just want a piece. No, I know. It's just, it just doesn't seem that sexy to me for whatever reason, because it's Kenyon Drake, and I just get flashbacks of him playing for the Miami Dolphins. And You mean I getting just, Adam Gaste? Yeah, he was getting <laughs> Good point. I just can't. Like, I, I mean, I have him at, at eight. That's not terrible. You have him at six. He's still an RB1, clearly. Just for some reason, the name just doesn't do it for me. Oh, it does it for me. It does all of it. It just does it. And I like what it does. And I just want a little more of it every time. I just want, I'm going to have Kenyon Drake in so many leagues because I'm going to overdraft him (laughs) because I'm just falling more and more in love with that offense. And I just want it. I want Kenyon Drake. So everybody in our league, watch out. The uh, the next boy is also mine. Him being Josh Jacobs consensus number eight. I have him at seven on mine. You have him all the way cratered at number 10 on your rankings. Uh, he was running back 13 on a points per game average last year. Average just right at 14 points per game. That is with playing, I don't know, two months with a broken shoulder blade and not being on the <laughs> field on third down. So to me, that's like that's like the floor. That's not the floor. That's like the basement. Like homeboy played up through a broken shoulder blade, would go into the locker room, get hydrocortis and shots, come back out and score tutties and be the man for the now Las Vegas Raiders. He is going to be a three down back with uh, Washington no longer on the scene. Josh Jacobs could could find himself in like the top four or five next season if yeah, it's he possible. pans out. Like yep. the youngness is there. I feel like you have to be young because the running back careers are so fleeting. And uh, he's just such he's such a stud. And the workload, I think, is going to easily be there. I think he definitely has 300 plus touches this season. So Gruden's already come out and said he's a three down back this season. So Josh Jacobs, I think is just as talented as any of these guys. Um, I, I think that he's going to be a steal at number seven and doesn't have maybe some of the concerns of uh, contracts and, and maybe vultures and offenses and like be, being the number two the number two target or weapon on an offense. 
that that is the Josh Jacobs weapon offense. There's there's no Michael Thomas on on there stealing gimmicky goal line. There's no Taysom Hill. Like that offense is Josh Jacobs. So I could definitely see him finishing higher than seven. Or seven yeah. in my ranking, eight consensus. Yeah, I, I agree with you of, of, you know, because DeAndre Washington's not there anymore. So if you can take those catches and I, I'm not going to be, I'm not saying it's possible that he goes like Christian McCaffrey scorched earth on the league, but like theoretically, if there is one guy that, that has that upside, it's probably Josh Jacobs. Because if, if they're checking down to him and he takes his catches plus Washington's catches last year and gets in the 60, 70 catch area and is, you know, doesn't have a broken shoulder. You know, he was running back 17 last year. So that's all right. Yeah. Um, points per game average was running back 13. Yep. And he was, he was 18 overall. He missed the three of the last four weeks and he was playing with bad shoulders. So, I mean, top 10 should be his absolute floor. And I would say of all the running backs that we we've talked about, um, he has the best, you know, after the first two or three, um, I think he has the best potential to be a top five back this year. Um, the question is, do you want to pull the trigger on him? Um, yeah, you're going to be deciding is- between Josh Jacobs and like DeAndre or Devante at that point. And it's going to be like, or do I take Lamar? Yeah, so it's it's ultimately a, a call, but, I, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, he's very similar to Delvin Cook was last year, who, you know, kind of had that a, a kind of a sneaky good season, um, even though Delvin was, was coming off of a torn ACL. Um, yeah. And so that's, he's right in the range that you can easily see the hop up from where he was last year at 18, easily into the top 10, could be a top five back. Uh, so the, the upside's there, and to your point, he is getting the ball a lot. He's never coming off the field. Yeah. And he's, he's just seems like a down-to-earth good guy, too, from what I've read. So, Great Twitter um, follow. Yeah, so he, I mean, he, I think, has the highest upside. Um, whether you get it or not, I don't know, because I don't know if John Gruden's still a good coach or not. Uh, he's, right. He is not... He has not really proven much over the last couple of years. Uh, we don't know what their quarterback situation is going to look like uh, if they abandon Derek Carr and go to Marcus Mariota or Nathan Peterman. It's like, do you, do you really want to be dealing with that all year? And, um, you know, they're going up against some pretty good offenses out in the West with, you know, having to go to mile high. The Broncos offense is going to be better. Kansas City's offense is going to be better. No idea what the Chargers are bring, bringing to the table this year. So I, I think we have him fairly ranked, but he is the highest upside potential, I think, of of this area. I, I think he's like of him and Kenyon Drake, um, you know, they're they're very, very, very similar, I think. Okay, interesting. So we got we're gonna we got some interesting players coming up. So let's talk about consensus number nine, Miles Sanders. Um, I think another another guy very similar. The, the last three are all those young guys, three down backs, high upside if they can get the receptions. So yeah. you want, I, and I like I like this offense too for Miles Sanders. Um, being that I don't think that there's necessarily a ton of daunting weapons. There is Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. I'm not. I don't think. Alshon Jeffrey is a huge weapon anymore these days. So um I don't know. Was he ever was he ever a huge uh, weapon? Speaking he has like one fan. or two good seasons with your boy Jake smoking Jay Cutler. Um Yeah, but he was he was always the number two guy to, to Brandon Marshall. He was. And Marshall had a couple good seasons too. Um but I guess Miles Sanders, like I know the offense is gonna run through Josh Jacobs. I don't and and Josh Jacobs is probably number one in top one, two, maybe number two or three passing option. Miles Sanders could be like the fourth passing option. Like the tight end, that offense runs through the tight ends. You have Alshon. I don't know. I don't, I, 
He had he had he had several good games when he did take over after Jordan Howard went down at the end of the season. Um, from week thirteen on, he averaged eighteen points per game and was running back four in points per game average. So, like the ceiling's there, he can do it, and he you know first first year in the offense, I think that the ceiling's there. So he could have a he could have a huge year. Um, the, the Eagles did come out and say, you know, after the whole big, uh, the, the leak on them trying to find or trying to sign Devonta Freeman, they did come out and say that really all they're looking for is to sign a veteran back just to basically have a very minimum role behind Miles Sanders. So what that really, I think says more about is Boston Scott, not being able to see the field than it does about Miles Sanders workload being impacted. So. I think his workload's there. I think that this is probably about where he'll finish. Like fringe, low end RB1, high end RB2, somewhere in there. Um let's move on to consensus number 10. I feel dirty with this ranking. Cause I had him higher and then I moved him lower. And now I'm looking at it and I think I want to keep moving him lower. And his name is Austin Eckler. Uh, coming in at consensus number 10, my number 12, Alex's number nine running back, half point PPR scoring this year. Alex, why will Austin Eckler finish inside the top 10? Because uh, he was number six last year. Okay. I think I think, think it's a fair place to start. Uh, 92 catches, almost 1,000 yards, uh, receiving and eight touchdowns. The I've talked in the past about you know the top receiving running backs being the you know higher floor type guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to take him here. Like, then why did you rank him here? These are your rankings. Because I think that's where he goes. So these are where you think people get drafted, not where you would draft them. Yeah. So I mean, ESPN's current. PPR rankings have him at nine, um, 16 overall. If, if I'm sitting here and I have to take Austin Eckler, I'm either taking a tight end or I'm taking a quarterback uh, and just banking. I mean, the running backs are, are oddly deep, and there's a lot of them that I would feel just as comfortable with as taking Austin Eckler. So I think this is where Austin Eckler goes. I'm terrified of his quarterback situation because I think it's very difficult for him to repeat having 90, 90 plus catches. So if, if Justin Jackson's getting the goal line carries, then I don't want anything to do with any of this. Okay. So I don't think that that really has a chance of happening. And for me, it's because weeks one through seven last season, Melvin Gordon was not on the field. And in those weeks, Austin Eckler averaged almost 19 and a half points per game, uh, which would have been RB2 on the season. So Melvin's gone again. The only difference, it is a big one. The only difference is Tyrod is now leading that team. Tyrod is not the same check down machine that Phil Rivers was. I worry about Eckler's passes um, or, or receptions going down because of that. <sighs> I just don't know. I mean, it's hard to 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 pick on or to pick a five eight five nine running back as your RB one. <laughs> I know. Like, I don't. But I yet, can't. I mean, how? I mean, how much bigger is Christian McCaffrey than him, though? I don't know. Gosh, I would th- I would bet that he's bigger. Um, five nine, five ten, five ten, five eleven. I don't know, but Eckler just looks. He looks so. Ah. I worry about the durability there. I think it's going to have to be some sort of committee, maybe at some point. I'm not sure, but for the first seven weeks without Melvin, he was averaging more than 90 points a game and was an absolute freaking monster, especially in PPR formats. Uh, consensus number 10 because of that um, 
I don't think I'm going to end up drafting him. I wouldn't be surprised as the season gets closer if you see the rankings and maybe the ADPs drift a little bit um, because of all of this. Yeah, I mean, Christian McCaffrey, according to what's listed online, Christian McCaffrey's one inch taller and weighs five more pounds. So there's really not that really? big of a difference. Yeah, there's really not that big of a difference Man. between the two, but it, he just seems so much smaller. He does. Maybe he just has bigger pads. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Good old Austin Eckler. All right. Consensus number 11. Leonard punch you in the face, Fortnite. You have Mr. Fortnite all the way up at number six. Enjoy him. My guy. He's, he's awful. You talked to. My guy. You sat here and lectured me about drafting people that are going to have an ability or opportunity to score touchdowns. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do, do you think do you think that the Jacksonville Jaguars are a good football team? Do you think that they're going to be in the red zone a lot this year? Sure. I had Gardner Minshew as a top top 12 quarterback. Oh. <laughs> so why wouldn't I have Leonard Fournette as a top top five running back or top six? So here we go. All right. <laughs> I was wrong before, so I can be wrong now, too. <laughs> you know what? When in doubt, double down. Uh, uh, if, right. If the, if the dealer's throwing, showing uh, 20 and you got you got 11, just double down. Don't take a card. Double down. All right. Give, so, me, give me your best Leonard Fournette stat here to redeem this in some form or fashion. And right. make me believe. So he was a number nine running back last year. So I have him at six. That's not a significant difference. Fair. We, we can start at that baseline. So number nine running back last year, I have him ranked at six. That's reasonable. He had 76 catches last year. Nobody really thinks about him as a receiving back. He had 100 targets. 76 catches, 500 yards. He had almost 1,200 rushing yards last year, which, I mean, sorry, yeah. So he, he had the six most rushing yards in the league last year. I have him ranked at six this year. The dude only had three total touchdowns, which is absurd. The dude is a beast. So the fact that he only had three touchdowns total and was still a top 10 running back based on what I said at the beginning of this, is crazy. Now, I want you... So, part of my rankings has to deal with what I think is progression. It's because the Jaguars didn't score any points, which is why you don't want players on bad teams so they don't get their little crappy fourth quarter junkyards that don't matter, because they don't he score. Had, he had three touchdowns. He averaged ten and a half points from week Points per game, 10 and a half points per game from week nine on. That's running back 28. Yep. And he's going to be better this year. Now, let me also say this. So if you get the opportunities in the red zone, then generally you score. I mean, we already talked about uh, Derrick Henry having 42 touches and scoring 13 times. Aaron Jones last year had 33 carries inside the 20-yard line and scored 14 times. Mark Ingram had 40 carries inside the 20-yard line and scored on 10 of them. Of those three guys that I've talked about, they're all scoring at a greater than a 25% clip on carries inside the red zone. Leonard Fournette had 43 carries inside the 20-yard line, and he only scored three times. Now, if he's able to bump that even up to 8%, if, if we're going to stick with the 25% rule, that's an increase of, of seven touchdowns. He can be a top five running back. So, and he didn't have any receiving touchdowns. He had zero. Do you know why he didn't with, score on those inside, those red zone touches? Because he was on a team 
that had a guy named Gardner Minshew as his quarterback or Nick Foles and there were no offensive weapons so they put eight men in the box and I don't know if you know this but they did not draft any other offensive weapons I don't see them scoring any more points yeah who I else see, are they giving the ball to they were they giving have to give them the ball they, they they were able to 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 run the ball between the twenties and then when the field shortened up they put the extra men in the box and Leonard Fournette ran straight ahead and punched people to get out of the way and averaged ten points for the last half the season and finished as uh, outside of an RB two outside of the top twenty four. So he was the number nine running back last year. Yes, he had a great first half of the season. You're welcome. Thanks, Leonard Fournette. You're a gem. Keep doing what you're doing. He is a top 10 running back easily, and that's why I have him at six. And that's why I have him at 17. Yeah, I'll, I'll, again, he will be closer to six than he will be 17. Go get him, Lenny. All right, what's six and 17? Cut it in half. 23 uh, divided by 2, 12 and a half. Oh, well, uh, does he finish in the top 12? Yes, that's very easy. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll add it to our running list. That Thank I'll you. Just, to, just destroy you on this year. Well, it's early rankings. Maybe we should do, you know, fire yeah, off the final. Well, yeah, you're going to look back on this and be like, I said Leonard Fournette wasn't going to be top 12. Yeah, oh, and then somebody with Corona spit on him and he got suspended for half the season. Oh, man. Because he punched him in the face. Good old I'm Lenny. Gonna you. I'm going to punch you in the face. Wow, we are not threatening violence. This is a PG production. PG. It is not. We talked about Dome a couple weeks ago, so... <laughs> We've talked about targeting <laughs> players who play in domes at the end of their season. Alex? Oh. Yeah, that's what I meant. You must be mistaken. Oh my god. Are you, are you going to edit that one out too? Like you edited out our conversation? <laughs> I don't then? know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm leaving all of this in. This, is, this all stays. This is all good stuff. All right, let's end this madness. Consensus, running back 12, James Conner. He is my running back nine. You insulted him and ranked him at running back 15. Yeah. Wow. I did. That's really bad. Hey, did you know that in 2018, he averaged on the season uh, 19.4 points per game. That's pretty good. That would have been running back two last year. It's true. You have him at 15. Yep. This so, uh, I, I, I might have been wrong. Uh, I was trying, like, so, I mean, we've talked about the Steelers in the past, and yeah, I think oh, we're yeah. both. And so I, I feel like I was like trying to tamper down my expectations. I mean, he was the sixth best running back, uh, six overall running back uh, in 2018, even with the 19.4 that you just talked about or whatever that was. Um, so, I mean, of all the players, I probably have him ranked too low. Um, but, I mean, I'll, I'll be okay. But, you know, great playoff schedule, as we've talked about. Um, comes down to can he stay healthy? I believe he's in a contract year. Don't quote me on that. Um, so he, he does have things to play for. So, um, yeah, I mean, he, we have him. I do have him higher than me, obviously, but um, I think overall our ranking is, is probably about correct based on the people we've talked about. Um, I think I would take all of those players over him. Yeah, I think I would too. Um, just with the gap year in there. But I tell you what, if I'm in the second round and he's sitting there winking at me, whoo boy, I'm gonna grab onto him. 
and I'm going to like it. It's going to feel nice. Yeah, for just for reference, uh, I mean, currently in the ESPN PPR cheat sheet, he's ranked the 22nd running back in 53 overall. Um, <laughs> so, who are um, these experts, man? Like, what is the deal? Yeah, so I mean, on this list, um, just for reference, they have Clyde Edwards Hilaire at 15, Gurley at 16, David Johnson 17, Chris Carson 18, Le'Veon 19. Melvin Gordon, 20, Devin Singletary, 21, James Conner, 22, and Raheem Mostert, and Mark Ingram, 23 and 24. Those are also, like, there's no reason why Conner and Mostert and Ingram should not be above, like, all of those guys that I just read off, um, as we'll kind of get into uh, next time we chat. But, you know, currently, where where James Conner's going, if you can get him in the fourth round, um, that's a that's a league winning pick. There's no way he stays that low, though. No, that ADP has to change. It's criminal. That's criminal. Yeah, but people get hurt and then people like forget about him. Well, not only that, they like take it out on them as if it's their fault that they got hurt. Like, oh man, that's bad. But I I agree. All right, and with that. I think we're going to leave our rankings there. Uh, Stay tuned for the next episode. Running backs 13 through 24. Uh, Alex, do you have any final words? Hmm. I'm trying to think of something witty that has to do with stadiums, but I can't come up up with anything. (laughs) Now! (laughs) Well, I'll turn your attention to our social media page. We are the Fantasy Football Sackos. Please follow us at the FF Sackos on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are available wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, here. Bye-bye.